Welcome to IEA Conversations. I'm Darren Grimes, Digital Manager at the IEA. In this week's podcast, the IEA's Associate Director, Kate Andrews, sat down with Francis Boole, who recently took part in the BBC Two's Mastermind, braving the black chair to compete for the coveted Mastermind trophy. What made this episode special was Francis's choice of specialist subject for the interrogation style question and answer session. Francis chose Friedrich Hayek, one of the most important liberal thinkers of the 20th century. He wrote not just about economics, for which he won a Nobel Prize, but also politics, psychology and the history of ideas. Kate asked Francis to take her through his journey of becoming interested in Hayek's work, why he decided to pick him as his specialist subject, if Francis believes Hayek is relevant in 2019, and how his body of work can help us navigate through our current political and economic climate, especially given that amongst young people, socialism is now very much in vogue. Francis, thank you so much for joining me. We're elated to have a celebrity on multiple fronts with us. Uh, You appeared on Mastermind at the end of last year, and your specialty topic was Friedrich von Hayek. And you aced every question. I think you got 11 out of 11 right. You know, maybe I I thought it would be good for some people at the BBC to read some Hayek as well. (laughs) Which they will have had to do to (laughs) So I kind of forced them to do that. (laughs) Well Um, done, well done. Yeah, doing your small part to educate the masses. Um, So I would love to know how, you know, a young person like yourself became interested in Hayek. I mean, I I certainly am too, but I find myself sort of alone in my reading habits. Yeah. You know, you became so passionate about it that you went on national TV to take part in a game show. So what was that process like for you? I guess, uh, so so how I became interested in Hayek, I guess um, it goes back to, so I studied economics for A-level. I then went to study philosophy. Actually, originally I was just studying philosophy and uh, I arrived at Edinburgh, you know, you know, 2008, uh, 2007, you know, just before the f- uh, financial crisis. So that that all mm. came about the subprime mortgage crisis and and uh, it sort of reignited my um, interests in economics. I became very, very interested in um, monetary theory and, and, and it kind of uh, led to me actually then moving from just philosophy, straight philosophy, to do, then doing philosophy and economics. I, I, I read some Ayn Rand and then eventually got exposed to um, the ideas of Ludwig von Mises. Uh, and through von Mises, uh, then started reading more more Hayek. And, um, and yeah. Ca- Truly organic experience for you. Yeah. You went from one to the next. <laughs> I, I guess it, it was. And, and I, I, I guess it was because of my fascination with what was going on in America, the subprime mortgage crisis, and really what were, what were the underlying causes of that? The, the Federal Reserve had essentially become a, a sort of credit management agency for the private sector, you know, just ended up with all this sort of housing finance paper on its balance sheet. And, and, and uh, yeah, and, and I kind of, you know, I, I've, I've read more um, Hayek and um, from Mises and then, you know, obviously became very interested in... Um, uh, the work of Mary Rothbart and mm. uh, and you've literally ticked every sound philosopher box. So <laughs> this is this is a lot of a lot of reading and and, and very impressive. Um, so that's how you came to f- to support free market ideas, become sympathetic towards them. Um, Hayek was born in Austria, yeah, uh, and one of his major role models was von Mises, wasn't it? Um, and it's been reported that Hayek became an economist because. He wanted to help improve the social conditions of the world. One of the accusations against free marketeers, if you're giving them a, a sympathetic hearing, is that they mean very well, but their ideas don't always come across as being very personable, very humane. They're not as in touch. If you're being less generous and you're against the ideology, then you say, you know, they don't care about the poor. They don't care about society. But Hayek directly got involved in economics to help yes, society. Yes, exa- exactly. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you make of that? I mean, do free marketeers today have a problem with messaging? Well, I think, uh, I think so. And I, I think, you know, on the surface, it would appear, you know, uh, that, that, well, and certainly um, those on the left feel they have some kind of moral uh, authority, uh, uh, you know, or some monopoly on compassion. But actually, when you get 
to the um, the core of, of, of free market principles, uh, you realize that it is the only compassionate choice and, and it is the only way that we can actually improve the lives and the lot of the majority of people. And, um, and I think, yes, that isn't communicated because of this kind of weird um, situation where, you know, the moniker of a liberal, being a liberal, has been completely um, redefined to be basically the opposite of what it actually should mean, which is, um, you know, f uh, standing for free markets and free individuals, appealing to the young people, which is what really what we should be doing. People who believe in free markets have kind of identified themselves as conservatives, but I think um, amongst young people that kind of makes people think of tradition and 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 and, and the and things which actually don't, don't really excite young you know people who want you know radical change and reform. I think we need to be more focused on on individual freedom and and uh, and and you know the 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 elements of of liberalism or the uh, the origins of liberalism which i think are exciting and can be exciting to young people really important point because hayek wasn't a conservative i have a lot of people would try to put him in that camp being on the center right you're yeah. conservative but he was fundamentally a classical liberal he was a reformist yes yeah. absolutely and and would have liked to see a lot more radical change than he did see over the course of his lifetime although you know we can we can get into that a little bit later but um well he famously wrote you know why i am not a conservative yes. to, to explain just that and um, and in fact, when w in in one of the most um, I think accessible books for people, if they want to kind of expose themselves to Hayek's ideas, is the Fatal Conceit, which I think is a great place to start. Um, I have a quote from that: "The curious task of economics is to demonstrate to men how little they really know about what they can imagine uh, they can design." Exactly. Yeah. Great. Yeah, um, great and I think this takes us on to another very important point that's relevant today, extremely relevant, is is sort of that the rise of of that populist narrative, mm. um, that the state or that big brother, or that something bigger and stronger than you, is better at controlling your life mm. than you are as we see the rise of these left and right populist movements throughout the West, the thing they have in common is that they're all opposed to classical liberalism. It yeah. doesn't matter if you do it from the left or the right. They're, they're very anti-free market ideas. And um, in Hayek's, you know, probably most famous book today in his sort of pinnacle piece, The Road to Serfdom, which he published in 1944, it, it is this warning against socialist and fascist uprisings mm. um, that the state central bodies just simply cannot improve the economy in a way that free markets and free individuals can. And it feels like we're going back to basics, a debate that surely seemed to be won in the 1980s and 90s, mm. right back at square one, because people are gaining a lot of traction going against Hayek and against these ideas and advocating for the state. Well, I think I think that's absolutely right. And there, there are really a lot of parallels uh, between the uh, the 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 climate now um, to sort of 40s and 50s and and the sort of trendiness of socialist ideas and um, and also you know as Hayek called them these uh, cheap dealers cheap secondhand dealers in ideas you know these sort of intellectual class who who cherry pick um, uh, ideas from uh, experts and economists who uh, that, that fit their narrative and 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 it's a problem and, and you know Hayek. Um, you know, famously argued that actually the people who should be disseminating their ideas are the people who are generating them. Today, uh, we have a, a problem in that it is trendy to to um, be a socialist, you know, and 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 it shouldn't be. And and I think it, it's you know it, it's it's a sort of hipster fad in a way. And and I guess because of it, it because it's lacking any real intellectual substance no they're, they're motivated by trends and um sort of the modern day appeal of something that has no examples apparently people say exactly. that real socialism's never been tried yeah. so it's great to idealize some ideal that we've never actually achieved but you know goodness forbid you do look at socialist experiments from north korea to venezuela it becomes a lot Ab absolutely a lot less yeah. appealing um but the, the intellectuals that you spoke about that that hayek spoke about um the sort of intellectual elite that crave power and they yeah. know that in order to source power they need to promote collectivist ideas mm. i mean th again this seems extremely relevant it's related to the brexit vote it's yeah. related to the uprisings in europe uh, you know again it's not to say that this is 
black and white and one side's right and one side's wrong, but the struggle for power for me always seems to actually come back to the fact that people know if they have the power, they get to choose what happens over other people's lives. Well, absolutely. Yeah. And, and surely our goal should be to to disperse the power from the center so it's not that one side or the other side has it but to give it back to people to help in that spontaneous order to create free market exchange well that's that's it and i think uh, you know a, a sort of keynesian approach to economics is catnip to the political <laughs> class because they uh, you know they want uh, something which permits and justifies their action and the consolidation of their power um, and the centralization of power um, and 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 Keynesian, Keynesian ideas uh, definitely um, uh, fit the bill for that, um, but uh, and 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 you know it's led to this Pandora's box of sort of modern monetary theory. It really beggars belief that 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 some people who consider themselves reasonable can actually espouse modern monetary theory um, with a straight face. You know, I mean, I, I, to me, you know, a five-year-old could 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 work out that you know, let's say you have a cookie and 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 uh, one cookie is five beans or beads or whatever you know more beads doesn't equal more cookies you can't uh, you can't multiply the net assets in an economy by creating more money like qe infinity i mean it's just it just doesn't it, i mean as like a the, child who often tried to steal <laughs> cookies from our top drawer i was aware that there was a, a yeah, finite supply exactly there's yeah, a finite supply as were my cookies. parents what are we going to do about this i think many of Hayek's ideas are, are more relevant than ever before. Um, but more young people are turning their heads towards the um, fantasy of socialism. Mm. It's a worrying proportion of young Americans who think that more people were killed under George W. Bush than Joseph Stalin. This idea that we need to redistribute more, that the state's going to solve everything, has traction right now. What, how would Hayek have seen 2019? What kind of messaging would he want us to put out there? And, and also, what do we need to take from him today that's still so relevant to the debate we're having? Well, I think, I think if you look back at um, Hayek's writings, especially after his um, Nobel Prize, he, he, he tried to be more, uh, I suppose, of a gradualist, you know, in the climate that he was writing in, you know, it, it, socialism was becoming more popular and, and, and you know, and, and Keynes was lauded as this, you know, hero to, uh, on the economic, economic scene. He made some uh, compromises in his writings, which I, th I think are uh, maybe perhaps he shouldn't have. Um, uh, but I think ultimately the, the, the aspects of his work, which I, I think are, are still absolutely relevant, the aspects which no uh, proponent of socialism has been able to uh, rebut are, I suppose, well, the calculation uh, debate, uh, price discovery, and the and the importance of the market for um, harnessing dispersed knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know the infinite amount of knowledge in in, in an economy, uh, and how uh, you you know there there is no way to centralize uh, uh, and 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 manage that um, that uh, information because it is dispersed. Um, without the um, the the price mechanism, the best rebuttal I've seen of of his discoveries around price mechanism and and dispersing knowledge is that oh well one day prices won't exist. We'll, well just have an infinite amount of yes, goods yeah. created by robots. One day they won't exist, and again you know and maybe there will be unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> but um, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, what book or essay written by Hayek would you recommend to IA, IA listeners that you don't think gets enough attention? Um, that really deserves more praise. Well, I think actually, if I can say two, oh, can I yes, say two? I'll, I'm going to give it to you. Okay, so I think the use of knowledge in society, I think, is one of the most important essays in history, and I think pe everyone needs to read that 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 essay. Uh, and then I would say, if if you are new to um, Hayek's work, or even if you're not, I think it's always, uh, you know, good to refresh your yourself. But I think uh, the fatal conceit is something which, mm -hmm. you know, everyone would do do well to read even even if maybe you are already leaning towards more free market um a free mar market position which i imagine a lot of uh, your listeners are um, it, it, it's a great um it, it you know provides you with a, a great arsenal of of arguments against uh, socialism against socialism it really does. and and that's what we need to be doing after your mastermind appearance what 
has the, rece- the reception been like, um, both from the public, but also from um, people more closer to you, personal friends? Um, are you the odd one out now, or has there been understanding about why you are so passionate about this Nobel Prize winning economist? Uh, I don't think, I, I, I've, I haven't had um, a hugely neg- negative uh, reaction to it. I mean, I think largely uh, it's been uh, one of ambivalence on 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 social media at least because i think people just aren't aware of hayek uh, and 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 that's very sad in its own uh, right exactly and uh, and um i think actually amongst my friends people were people were impressed i think just because i guess it's not something that people would uh, naturally um uh know much of anything about uh, and i guess t- to go on and get every question right people kind of thought oh, well you know that's well done intriguing yeah. that he got that that he knows so much about that 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 person has point. it led people to ask you questions yeah it has actually and 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 not just the bbc not just the well actually uh, conspicuously not the bbc <laughs> <laughs> as in uh, aside from mastermind yes. <laughs> uh yeah people have people have asked and I, I, and i hope i mean i i i i i hoped when i chose hayek that it would you know maybe lead people to go to his Wikipedia page and find out who he is and what it is he stood for. And, you know, maybe they'd see, okay, classical liberalism, what is that? You know, what, what is classical liberalism? And, and how is that different to what I, I think I'm a liberal? And a lot of people think they're a liberal, but, but that's because they've, they've sort of been um, misinformed about what, what a liberal actually is. And people have asked me, me questions about Hayek, but I hope that they've done their own uh, mm-hmm. reading. I hope that that's kind of an outcome. At least if, if, if one person saw me on Mastermind and thought, okay, well, who is Hayek? And, and it led them to go and, and read up on his ideas. I, I think that's a victory. You've contributed to the spontaneous order. Yeah, that makes exactly. the world go that's round. Thing, yeah. Hayek would be very proud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Francis, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this was wonderful. Uh, you can download more IA podcasts on our iTunes channel, IA Conversations. Thanks so much for having me.